There are three types of traits that we can see in a phylogeny. The first one, symplesiomorphy. This is a trait that is ancestral, that we inherit from a common ancestor, but is not unique to a particular group. The second trait is a synapomorphy, which is also a trait that we inherited from a common ancestor, but it's a derived trait. The word derived means it's newer. It's a newer version of a trait. So that means it's a trait that is unique to that group. And lastly, we have homoplasty, and this is a trait that is not inherited by evolutionary descent. So it's not inherited from a common ancestor, but instead it's a trait that evolved separate times. So this is, do not confuse this with homologous, it's actually the opposite of homologous. This would be an analogous trait. So homoplasty is rather an analogous trait and not a homologous. While on the other hand, simplesiomorphies and synapomorphies are both homologous traits. The difference is in simplesiomorphy, the trait is more ancestral, while in synapomorphy, the trait is derived or newer. So like we said, synapomorphies and simplesiomorphies are both homologous traits, are examples of homologous traits that show a common evolutionary origin. So if we look at the um, forelimb of all mammals, we can see that they all have the same evolutionary descent. So we all share four limbs, and this is a homologous trait. However, whether it's a simplesimorphy or a synapomorphy, it depends on what we're comparing it to. So this, these traits are never one way or the other forever. It's always in a context. So in which context are we talking about so we can define whether it's a synapomorphy or a simplesimorphy? So let's say that we're looking at bats and we want to know whether the presence of forearms in bats is something unique to them or not. And bats do have forearms, but so do humans and cats and purposes and horses. And all vertebrates are all uh, tetrapod vertebrates. They all have forelimbs. So this is not something unique to bats. Actually, it's present in reptiles as well, and amphibians. So this is an ancestral trait. Even though we all have it and it's a homologous trait, it's not unique to bats. It is a simplesiomorphy. But now let's say that instead of looking at just the presence of the forelimb, we're looking at a forelimb that is shaped as a wing. So in this case, we're looking at the particular of having a wing. And is having your forelimb shape into a wing something unique to bats? And we can see that in that case, that is true because the forelimbs of other mammals are not shaped as wings. So having a forelimb shaped as a wing will be a synapomorphy of bats, and we can actually use this to distinguish bats from any other mammal. So this would be something unique to that particular group. On the other hand, homoplastic traits are traits that are analogous, meaning they do not come from their common ancestor. They were not inherited from a recent ancestor. Instead, they evolve independently in each of these groups. And that is the case of the bats of insects, the bats of these uh, pterosaurs or ancient dinosaurs, these wings of uh, birds and the wings of bats. So all of these wings evolve independently in each of these groups and they do not share a recent common ancestor who had those wings. So instead they each evolve them independently. And they evolve wings because they have the same selection pressure that the environment is selecting them to evolve this particular trait. Traits that evolve because of the same selective pressure we say they're evolving because of convergent evolution. Convergent evolution will be the process driving these traits to look similar, even if they do not share a common ancestor. Let's look at this example. This is a phylogeny of all existing chordates. Chordates include vertebrates plus invertebrates that have a notochord. So this group here, they're chordates but they do not have a vertebral column, instead they just have a notochord. 
this group in he green here, these are all fish, these are all what we call fishes, and they include multiple types of fish, including common bony fishes and cartilaginous fish like sharks, as well as lampreys, uh, and also long fishes. And on this end here, we have tetrapods, so these are four-limbed vertebrates, those are the ones that colonize terrestrial environment, those are the ones that live on land. And we start with amphibians, and we also have mammals, birds, and reptiles here in orange. So let's recap how we interpret this type of diagram. We look before at diagrams so that they can be in either orientation. This one is in a horizontal position, but the interpretation is still the same. When you have two groups, and the node at that group will be the most recent common ancestor of those groups. And if we move down, we can find the most recent common ancestor of each of these groups. So over here will be the most recent common ancestor of all tetrapods. So that would be this one over here. And as we keep moving farther down in the phylogeny, eventually we will find the re most recent common ancestor of all vertebrates, because everybody from here on is a vertebrate. And as we move on the more ancient, the oldest ancestor of this particular phylogeny will be this one here, and that is the ancestor of all chordates. So this ancestor here would be the ancestor of all vertebrates, and that ancestor was the, la the one who had a vertebral column for whom everybody thereafter inherited the vertebral column from. So all the descendants from this ancestor, so all these branches, everyone who branches from there, they all have a vertebral column and it's because they inherited from this ancestor. Now let's focus on the group tetrapods and let's look at different traits. So let's see the presence of a vertebral column is the presence of a vertebral column something unique to tetrapods, which are this highlighted in blue, including amphibians, mammals, reptiles, and birds? Are these, all these groups have a vertebral column? Is that a synapomorphy of them, or is it a simplesiomorphy? And although they all inherited the vertebral column from an ancestor, the common ancestor of all tetrapods, this one over here also had a vertebral column. However, that ancestor was not the first one to have a vertebrate column. Other fish also have vertebrate. So this uh, having a vertebrate column is not unique to tetrapods, which means that will be a simplesiomorphy. Like we said, this is all in relation to something else. So these traits do not ex are not always simplesiomorphies. But when we compare tetrapods to everybody else, having a vertebrate column is a simplest eumorphy because other groups, such as fish, also have a vertebral column despite not being tetrapods. So what about another trait? Let's see the presence of digits. So digits first appear in this ancestor of all tetrapods. And everyone in this group, amphibians, mammals, reptiles, and birds, they all originally had five digits in their hands and in their forearms and in limbs. So this is something that all tetrapods have and it's also something that they inherited from the common ancestor. And it is also something unique to them because fish do not have five digits. Fish have fins but they do not have hands with five digits. So this is something unique to tetrapods and something that distinguishes them from other groups of organisms. In that case, that would be as synapomorphy. Okay, so what if we compare endothermia? Endothermia is the ability to control your body temperature internally. And this is something that mammals and birds both have. So if both mammals and birds have this, is this a synapomorphy of mammals and birds or is this some other type of trait? So we have to look into the tree and we see that mammals the recent ancestor of mammals is over here, and the recent ancestor of birds is over here. So they do not share a recent common ancestor, and therefore they could not have evolved 
endothermy from their common ancestor. Instead, the common ancestor of mammals and birds is somewhere here, and it would have to be if they inherited endothermy from that ancestor, all the members of this group, so including reptiles, they should be endotherms, which they're not. So the most parsimonious explanation is that mammals evolve endothermy at some point in time separately from birds then inherited endothermy at some other point in time. A trait like this that has evolved independently in these two groups is called a homoplasy which is also a way to say it is an analogous trait. So to recap on what we have said, when we are talking about tetrapods only, having a vertebrate column will be a simple isomorphy, as it is something that they all share, but it's not unique to them, as fish also have a vertebrate column. While having five digits, it's unique to tetrapods, so they will be a synapomorphy of tetrapods, and when comparing mammals and birds, having the ability to control their temperature or endothermia, it's a homoplasy. Let's look at this example we have mentioned previously. We're looking at the presence of parental care in reptiles. So all of these organisms in, within the red box have parental care. And we mentioned before that they had inherited from their most recent common ancestor over here, who also had parental care. So is this an example of a simplicimorphy, synapomorphy, or homoplasy? And since this is a trait that they inherited from the recent common ancestor and is unique to this group, it is not shared by other members such as turtles, this will be a synapomorphy and something that we can use to distinguish crocodiles, dinosaurs, and birds from other reptiles.